Well, what's going on you guys? Welcome to another episode of Business Every Day. My name is Jonathan and on today's episode, we are going to be breaking down my top five tips, tricks, hacks, whatever you want to call them for the Inventables Evil software. Easel is the X-Carve Inventable Company's proprietary software that they use to help you create the items that your X-Carve will carve out of the stock material. And so I will be showing you some things that I've learned in the first month of owning my X-Carve and how I have gained some insights on how to use Easel more efficiently and some of the hidden features that uh, I have found to be extremely helpful in my carving. So let's jump right on in and see my top five tips for Easel. Tip number one, I'm gonna start off with something super easy and simple, but it can change how you do everything in the software. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pull in an object um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull in, let's pull in a snowflake here. Let's do a fill snowflake. So we have the snowflake right here. We're gonna move it to the center of our screen. Now, if I want to see how this is going to be cut, I can rotate my screen like this on the right-hand side and see the simulation of the cut. But what if my snowflake is too far to the right or to the left and I want to get in closer and, oh, I'm zooming in, but I can't actually see the snowflake. The simplest thing to do is hold the shift key on your keyboard, and now you can drag your entire work surface in easel. And so if I'm like, oh, it's too far, I hold the shift key and then move the mouse accordingly. Otherwise, if I just move the mouse, then my object is just going to rotate. And so the first tip is hold the shift key so I can manipulate my entire work piece in the simulator. Tip number two, I'm gonna call depth and centering. Uh, the first thing that I wanna show you is how to manipulate the depth of your material. Uh, so when you have an object, like I have this hexagon here, there are two ways to adjust depth. The primary way to do it is you come over to the right-hand side, right above the simulator, and then you can add the settings to what kind of material that I'm working with, the width of the material, the length of the material, and here's the thickness of the material. Now, when I first got started, I didn't understand that this was the dominant measurement. So whatever I type in here, that depth cannot be exceeded when I start coming over here to manipulate my object. And so if I set this to five, two five hit enter now my depth of material will be 5.25 or 0.525 now if i come over here to my object i select my object i can select a depth of 0.525 but nothing greater if i want this to be 0.6 well i can't do that unless i adjust my full stock material because my full stock material measurement is over here under the materials tab and then when I select my object under the cut tab, I cannot exceed the depth of material. Now this is kind of a safety feature in easel so that I don't also cut into my waste board or my C channel, uh, but that is how you would set your ultimate depth of your material. Now, if I have this object here and this is my entire cut plane, my entire piece of material, um, if I select my object and I go over to the edit tab, I can actually hit the button here at the very bottom that says center material. And it will center my material both on the X axis and the Y axis. And so that I know that whatever my actual stock is, that this object is completely centered on that material. So again, hit the edit tab and then come down to the very bottom and it will say center material. Tip number three is going to be starting your cut. Where do you want your x carb to actually start cutting? Uh, it is by standard going to start in the bottom left-hand corner at zero, zero. Um, but if you notice when you select your object, you have under the shape settings, you have the positions of where you actually want that cut to start. Now, I have only played with the bottom left-hand corner and center. Now, the interesting thing about center is if I just click center, 
right here. And then I set my X carve as at zero, zero. It's going to think that my object is centered at zero, zero when it's actually not. It's actually zeroed at six, four. Um, so the way that I move my object to zero, zero is I select my object. And then on the X, I type in zero. On my Y, I type in zero. I hit enter and now my object even though in the simulator it is off the material and over here it shows you know it's it's out of place it's off the stock material but i know that i've selected the object to cut at position zero my object is positioned at zero zero and so now that when i clamp down my material i put the bit right here in the very middle um, so I would draw a line straight down and straight across, find where that cross axis is, put my bit there, that is my home position. And now I can cut around my object here. And it just helps because if I'm clamping, especially with these hexagon ornaments that I've been doing, um, I can clamp around on the sides and I don't really have a square edge to align my material. And the zero, zero position uh, cutting center is actually quite helpful when you're cutting objects that are kind of wonky in shape, circles, triangles, things of that nature. Okay, tip number four is importing an image. Uh, one of the most important fundamental things that you can do in easel is import an image. So if there's something that you want to create, a new object, um, you can go to Google Images, you can go to Pinterest, you can go pick out something that has a silhouette or a profile, and you can import that into easel and then begin to work with it, which I have found extremely helpful. But in order to do that, we're going to click on the import button, the little arrow here. We're going to select image trace and then we're gonna click upload file. So from here, we're going to decide where this image is coming from. It's coming from my device, it's coming from the internet link. Um, I can take a picture of, of me, it doesn't matter, uh, but I upload my image from here. So let me go grab an image. Okay, now that I have an image, this is my friend's business logo. I have selected it and now I'm gonna hit upload. So once the image is uploaded, I have a few different options to work with it. Right now, it's super blurry. Uh, I have a few settings that I can work with. Threshold is the sensitivity that the software is to pick up the lines um, of the image that I'm working with. And so I can set that to all the way high uh, at 99%, and then things can get a little weird. I have found that around 70 to 75% is the range in which it picks up the best of outlines. Now smoothing, um, it will either round over the edges. I can set that as high as one where all the edges will be super smooth, or I can set things to zero and everything will be very rigid. In this particular image, things aren't, uh, it doesn't really matter. I have two check boxes here. One is for invert. Um, and one is for trace outline. Now, something to keep in mind, image traces, uh, all of the dark areas is the areas in which you will be removing material. That is the cut path. And so if I wanted to cut all around this image, but leave the image embossed, then this is what I would want to do. But if I wanted to cut into the material and just cut out the logo itself, then the darkened areas are what I have selected right now. So I can either cut away material or I can cut the actual logo out. Now the trace will actually go around each item, each object within the image. If I was doing some super fine detail, uh, trace the outlines is sometimes the best option. So once I have decided how I want my image to be cut, I click import and now my entire image is in easel. Tip number five for easel is uh, moving and scaling your image. Uh, one of the things that you can do is once you have imported an image, imported an object of any kind, um, you can begin to play with it and move it uh, all around your stock material. Now, one of the things that I have found is that when 
you import an image, all of the elements are separate. And so I can all of a sudden move this element accidentally, and now it's completely out of place with the logo. The control Z function, uh, which is the undo function, is probably your best friend um, because every single part of this uh, image trace is a separate object. And so I have to be very careful when I'm moving things um, that I'm selecting the entirety of the image. Now, one way to get around this is you select the entire object, and then I come over here to edit, and then I hit combine. Now, once I hit combine, now all of the object is one piece. And so I can move the whole thing around without worrying about screwing up any particular element of the piece. When I've selected the entire piece, I now have the option to scale it um, up and down by using the corners, just like I would an icon or something like that. Um, but over here in the size settings actually gives me the precise uh, measurements of my object. And so if I want to make this six by six, um, you can slowly drag it up and I find it some hard to follow, you know, oh, I'm at 9.8, 9.9. Oh, I'm just over six inches. If I want to make it six by six, what I can actually do is I can type in six and then I can highlight height. I type in six, hit enter. Now I know that my object is exactly six inches by six inches. And I can lock in that setting and so that I can't change the scaling accidentally. So I can either manually bring it, the image, I can slide it larger, I can slide it smaller, or I can just directly type it in. Let's say I want a 5.5 inch by 5.5 inch. Now my object is exactly 5.5 by 5.5, and then I can recenter the whole material, and now it'll be cut in the middle of my stock material but oh wait i'm gonna do this in a hexagon i want to cut it in the starting in the center path okay so now i'm going to set my object to zero and zero now my object will be cut perfectly zeroed in the center of my actual stock material well, there you have it, guys. Those are five tips, tricks, and hacks that I have found in my first 30 days of working with the Easel software. Hopefully, this gives you some insights and makes your creating a little easier. I know that this whole new process of 3D modeling, 2D modeling, learning CAM and CAD, and just how everything works together has been kind of daunting, but it's been a fun process to learn and to grow and to share that with you guys. Um, I'm sure there'll be many, many more lessons to learn here in the next few weeks to come. And I'm just committed to using my X-Carve every single day in order for me to just get familiarized and uh, just understand how all the different components work together. So stay hopeful and encouraged out there. Just keep carving, figuring out what works, what doesn't work, look up tutorials, and just have a whole lot of fun doing it. Thanks for joining in today and hopefully it was helpful.